हेलो स्टूडेंट्स द टॉपिक इज वाइल्ड लैंड्स इथरनेट वाइल्ड लोकल एरिया नेटवर्क इथरनेट सो इन दिस वी विल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल स्टडी द आई ट्रिपल ई स्टैंडर्ड वट डज आई ट्रिपल ई स्टैंड फॉर दैट इज द इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक इंजीनियरिंग राइट सो इन एट नाइनटीन एटी फाइव दिस इज द कंप्यूटर सोसाइटी ऑफ द आई ट्रिपल ई दे स्टार्टेड अ प्रोजेक्ट नेम्ड एज एट जीरो टू सो वाइल वर्किंग ऑन द प्रोजेक्ट uh they specified the project a02 as a way of specifying the functions of the physical layer and the data link layer of major lane lan protocols right so they said that this project a02 will be responsible for specifying the functions to the two layers that is data link layer and the physical layer so here we can see in the ieee the relationship of 802 standard to the traditional osi model is here given like here right so ieee divided the subdivided the data link layer into the two sub layers that is the llc and mac llc is the logical link control and mac is the media access control right and it also created the several physical layers standards for the different local area protocols right here you can see that the data link protocol is having the lcc llc and the mac protocol right so it has subdivided the data link layer into the two sub layers that is the mac and llc now we will discuss this both in detail so first you can see here that uh, we are having here the hdlc frame compared with the llc and mac frames right so here you can see that the llc defines the pro pdu the protocol data unit that is somehow similar to the hdlc right so here you can see that in the hdlc we are having the address control upper layer data and fcs frequency check control or forward check control we can say forward check sequence right or uh, the frame check sequence right so here we are having uh, in the llc we are having two things that is the dsaap and ssap so dsaap is the destination service access point and ssap is the source uh, source service access point right so uh, next is the control then is the upper layer in the mac frame we are having the mac header that is the mac payload that is the actual data and then we are having the fcs that is the frame check sequence right so it's the protocol then the what is the standard ethernet the original ethernet which was created in the 1976 at the park that is the xerox paul polo alto research center then it has four generation that is the standard ethernet fast ethernet gigabit ethernet and 10 gigabit ethernet right so here you can see that how ethernet was evoluted what was the evolution of the ethernet now here we will discuss the mac frame in detail right so here you can see that in the mac frame first we are having the preamble preamble is basically if uh, we say that that uh, the abstract or the trailer that is given before the something so preamble is the story uh, of this frame the mac frame right then is the sft that is the start frame delimiter destination address source address length or type so this is also we can say that this is the buffer data and padding so here we are having the data actual data that is the payload and then we are having the crc right cyclic redundancy check so this will be used for any the error check right so this is the mac frame structure the next we will be having the minimum and maximum lengths so what will be the frame length here you can see that the minimum payload length can be of the 46 bytes and the maximum payload length can be of the 1500 bytes and the minimum frame length can be 512 bits or 64 bytes and the maximum frame length of the mac can be 12144 bits or 1518 bytes so now this is the hexadecimal notation of the ethernet this is the very important notation you have to remember this notation here you can see that we use uh, e station 
on an ethernet network has its own network interface card nic it fits inside the station and provides the station with a 6 byte physical address and this is known as normally the 48 bits here you can see that that is a hexadecimal notation separated by the colon 06 colon 01 colon 02 colon 01 colon 2c colon 4b so this is of the 6 bytes 12 hexa digits and equal to 48 bits so this is a very important hexadecimal notation you have to remember this for the ethernet address right this is also an example of it now next you can see that uh, in case of the different operational of the addresses that are the unicast addresses multicast addresses broadcast addresses and anycast addresses so first of all if we see that uh, what is the unicast addresses that you can have that there is only one receiver this is one to one communication so this is the unicast if I am having one sender and one receiver this is the unicast right here this is a representation over here you can see here we are having a sender so message is sent the receiver is one here the receiver is one here the receiver is one so the communication is one to one point to point so this is the unicast communication so address will be also unicast right the next is the multicast you are having a one message and you want to send it to the multiple receivers right so uh, here the sender is one the message is one but the receivers can be more than one so this is called the multicast communication right the next is the broadcast communication right so the broadcast communication is uh, that you are having uh, very unnecessary traffic the message is one and you want to send them to everyone the receivers can be multiple at the infinity level here you can see that the, at the broadcast level the sender is one and the receivers are the many anyone can receive the message right now that is any cost what does any cost mean any cost message that the packet is sent to the closest host between the destination that has the same IP address right so here you can see that all these are having the destinations are having the same IPs but the closest one is this one the C1 so in a case of the any cost uh, address or communication it will send the message to the closest destination that is the C1 with the same IP right so this was about the any cost communication now this is a, a source address is always a unicast right so how we will identify it right so this is the notation that the unicast here we will having ending with the zero multicast will be ending with the one so this will be indicating the multicast so this is how we can identify the unicast and the multicast right so here you can see that uh, there is an example uh, different destination addresses are given the first one is a unicast address why because a address is 1010 so it is ending on zero so it is unicast the b one is multicast because it, it is the 7 in binary is 0 triple 1 so it is uh, ending in 1 so it is multicast the broadcast address because all the digits are F's so the C1 is broadcast so let me make it a more simpler to you that uh, we will uh, start identifying from the left side right so this is the left side if the second digit is even like 0 right or it is even that is unicast communication now again we will start identifying from the left if the second digit is odd that is one so it will be multicast and if all the digits are f then it will be a broadcast address so this is much easier way to identify which address it is whether it is uh, unicast or uh, it is multicast or broadcast right now the categories of the standard ethernet right so i triple e divided it into different uh, standards or set different standards for the common implementations <clears throat> so the uh, so those standard ethernet uh, common implementations are 10 base 5 10 base 2 10 base t and 10 base 5 let's discuss them in detail so this is about uh, manchester encoding at the manchester university is a type of line coding in which the encoding of each data bit is either low than high or either high than low for equal time right so this is a sort of the encoding in which the each data bit can be either once low and then high or once high then low for the equal time right so this is the manchester coding 
the next is that we will discuss all the standards in the detail here you you can see that 10 base 5 the first one that is the thick ethernet the first implementation is called the 10 base 5 thick ethernet or thick net so we will not go into detail of the slide so here you can see this representation uh, uh, this is given the some baseband signal this is the you can say that with the first ethernet specification that is the range right so here you can see that uh, we are having some communication line over here or the medium over here right and we are having some transceivers over here so this is how that it will working be on a straight wire that is the thick net or thick ethernet 10 base 5 now in case of the second that is 10 base 2 that is the thin ethernet the communication line is a bit curved you can see that here that 10 base 2 right it is the same like how it is working the network interface card it is similar to its working so here you can see that we are having different the uh, transceiver over here and then the system over here and then again at the system over here so this is how the 10 base 2 works so it is also the cheaper net i we would, we would say right the next is the 10 base t twisted pair cable so it is very understandable from this t that we here we will be using the twisted pair element right so this is the representation of the uh, 10 base t twisted pair ethernet here we are using the hub and uh, we are having two pairs are the double pairs of the UTP cable unshielded twisted pair cable right so this is how we represent the 10 base T twisted pair cable the last one is the 10 base F it is very understandable from its name that we will be using the fiber ethernet in it so you can see here that we are using a hub and uh, two fiber optic cables with the transceivers and the systems right so this is about the 10 base f fiber ethernet so these standards are very important you must keep them in your mind 10 base 5 10 base 2 10 base t and 10 base 5 so the topology here used in the 10 base uh, f at 10, 10 base t is the star topology and uh, in the 10 base 5 at 10 base 2 the topology used is the bus topology right so these are the similarities between both of them now we will discuss <clears throat> the next is the we'll be having the summary of the standard ethernet implementation that is the table to all those four ethernet so here you can see what is the media used in the 10 base 5 thick coaxial cable in the 10 base 2 thin coaxial cable 10 base uh, t that is the two utps unshielded twisted pair cables and uh, 10 base f that we are using the two fiber optic fibers and uh, the, what is the maximum length so for the 10 base 5 that is 500 meter 10 base 2 185 meter 10 base t that is 100 meters and for the 10 base f we are it's uh, 2000 meters so it's having the maximum length because we are using the fiber optics in it right so its strength is as very high so the maximum length will be also high so line coding where the line coding is done it is done as the manchester 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 in all four standards right so what were the changes in the internet uh, in order to deal in with the collisions or in order to increase the bandwidth lands were divided by bridge to get two advantages these were the two advantages in order to increase the bandwidth or separate the collision domains in order to deal with the, all these collisions or the noise disturbances we were using a bridge between the connections right so here you can see that the uh, the first station and the second station both are sharing their bandwidths right this is the line showing the shared bandwidths right so here you can see that we are having an uh, unbridged ethernet network the total capacity is divided into all stations so this is a uh, you can see that this is a line communication line and the capacity is divided into all uh, we are having uh, 12 systems over here right then we have used a bridge between them we have divided the whole network into two parts and used the bridge in between so now on this side it the whole uh, bandwidth is divided into uh, through uh, over the six uh, systems and over this side the hole is divided over the six so it will increase the bandwidth and also minimize the collisions right again we have divide again we have divided further divided them this one we made four divisions and use the bridge in between them then this is an example of the switched ethernet we are using a switch and all the systems are connected to it right it will also help us to increase the bandwidth and uh, minimize the collisions 
then we are making use of the full duplex switched ethernet that uh, we are uh, transmitting and receiving the information at the same time simultaneously right so this will also help to increase the bandwidth and minimize the collisions then is uh, the fast ethernet uh, sub layers right so we have already discussed them that were the mac layers and the llc layers so this was all about the ieee how they divided the uh, data link layer into the sub layers and then they give four standards 10 base 5 10 base 2 10 base t 10 base f and then the concept of bridges in order to increase the strength of the bandwidth and to minimize the collision so this was all about the ieee standard